Hello and welcome back to this training and this is AppGIS Desktop from beginner to pro. And today we'll be looking at the first session which is an introductory section and we will be looking at a concept of spatial data or geospatial data. So uh, what is a spatial data? It comprises the relative geographic information about the Earth and its future. A pair of latitude and longitude coordinates defines a specific location on Earth. Spatial data are of two types according to the storing techniques, namely raster data and vector data. Also, spatial data or geospatial data refers to that data that have a geographic component to them. So what is non-spatial? Non-spatial simply that data will contain what instead of where. Now the other one, the position where, that is spatial data. Non-spatial data is what? So it's the descriptive part of the spatial data. So they are interrelated. You cannot do without the other. So spatial data talks about the where, non-spatial data talk about the what. So on ArcGIS, when you're trying to describe, we call it attributes. All right, so whenever you hear attributes, we're referring to the non-spatial data. It stores both the spatial and the non-spatial data. So as mentioned above, it is independent of geographic location. An attribute could contain both spatial and non-spatial data, just like I explained now. So non-spatial data can help put spatial data into more context. It is characteristic data. We're going to look at coordinate systems. So what are coordinate systems? They represent 3D surface of Earth, that's in longitude and latitude, X or Y, or X and Y, locate a given place on Earth in decimal degrees. Now, those are the two, this is one of the two coordinate system we have when you're using ArcGIS. All right, so we have this projected coordinate system and the geographic coordinate system. Now the geographic coordinate system most of the times are those that we have in longitude, latitude, decimal degrees and all of that. Uh, so, and then the projected coordinate system, it section the earth into uh, zones. In Nigeria, like for instance, in Nigeria, for instance, we have Zone 31, Zone 32, and Zone 33. And so basically, we said here that the transformation of the 3D soft, uh, surface of the Earth to a flat 2D surface with a view of measuring linear distances. Horizontal units are represented in meters, and universal transverse Mercator is very widely used. The Earth is being sectioned into zones. That's why we have uh, WGS 1984 as under the Clark uh, 1880, I mean 1980 Sparrow, any of them, 1880, and then it's divided into zones. Nigeria, for instance, we have zone 31, zone 32, and then partly zone 33. So like Kaduna State, Taraba State, most of the Northwest are in Zone 32. With, then the North Central, like uh, Mina, which is between Zone 31 and Zone 32. So basically, you'll be seeing most of uh, whether projected or geographic coordinate system that are going to be used on this uh, training we are going on. All right, so different data types used. So we have raster data which are used to represent continuous data values such as elevation, hill shape, temperature, and it comprises of rows and columns to store data values. Raster data comprises of cells, pixels, in a grid matrix. Each cell represents an area. No earth surface raster data are image with geography. Okay, note, earth surface data are image data with geographic geographical coordinate associated with them. There was an error in putting this together, so it's a note, all right? 
So vector data are used to represent discrete futures. That is, it uses discrete pro polygon points and lines to represent the world, that's the real world. Now, the common file used for vector data are shape files, future class, and all that. So those are the common files used. So these are the common files. So we have polygon shape file. It represents discrete polygon such as administrative regions or country regions and all that. So we also have the polling lines we use to represent linear future like roads, like rivers. And then finally, we have the point shape file. It represents point futures like schools. Let's say you're working on a point map, so you identify schools within a location like Zaria. Now you identify those points within schools, hospitals, uh, police stations, market, and so on and so forth. All right, so it's uh, X and Y, that's your longitude, your latitude, your eastern, your northern, any of the coordinate system you picked for your work. So terms or type of things you'll be hearing in ArcGIS, to be precise. So you'll be hearing things like the geodatabase. So what is this geodatabase? Now I'm going to read the one that book says, and I'm going to tell you the one that I used to tell my student. So geodatabase is the native data structure for ArcGIS and is the primary data format used for editing and data management. Now, while ArcGIS works with geographic information in numer numerous geographic information system, GIS file format, it is designed to work with and leverage the capability of the geodatabase. So let me give you an instance of what the geodatabase is. You want to cook rice, right? Now, the pot is the geodatabase. That you put your rice, you put your maggi, you put your onion, you put your salt, you put every other thing. Now that is the geodatabase. Now let's break it down to something more familiar. Amadou Bello University is a geodatabase. Now from outside what you know is that it's Amadou Bello University. So when you come inside Amadou Bello University, you realize that it contains a lot of things. So I'm going to continue this story when I am explaining the other one. So, Types of geodatabase. We have file geodatabase. It stores as folders in a file system. That is, if your system is having 10 gig, so you can store up to 10 gig. If your system is having 20 gig, you can store up to 20 gig. If your system is having one terabyte, you can store up to a terabyte in file geodatabase. So it's limitless as it uses your system uh, file, system storage system, all right? So we have the personal geodatabase. All data state are stored within a Microsoft Access data file and is limited to just two gig. That is, if you're doing a project of a limited project, like a small project that between zero and two gig, then you use personal geodatabase. They have the same thing as the file geodatabase, just that file geodatabase uses your system storage and it is saved as a folder, while personal database is using Microsoft Access, which is a database uh, language or whatever, all right? So then finally, we have the enterprise database, also known as multi-user database. They can be unlimited in size and have numbers of users, that is different people, organization. These are mostly used in organizations and all that, all right? So. So the second thing we want to know is a shapefile. So a shapefile is a non-topological format for storing the geometric location and attribute information of geographic features. So geographic features in a shapefile can be represented by points, by lines, or a polygon signifying areas. Now, uh, shapefile ArcGIS have had a trend, or let's say a history in moving type of format. I think the one I know is coverage from coverage, then they moved to Shapefile, and then currently they are now in the geodatabase, which is a container. I'm going to continue that story. I began in the previous uh, number one, I was, as I was explaining soon. So now I'm going to just talk about the geodatabase versus 
the shape file. So the geodatabase is a collection of spatial and non-spatial data stored in a relational database management system. A shape file is a simple file-based format that stores geometric and attributes of a single future class. So meaning, in there's not any complication when you're creating a shape file. It's as simple. It's just you know, but the geodatabase is complex and it contains more things. You will explore that as I will give you tips to explore and then you also explore that on your own as we continue in this class. All right. So number three is a future data set. Earlier on, I said the geodatabase is the container. And I set an example with Amadou Bello University as a geodatabase. Now, if you enter Amadou Bello University, there are 17 faculties in Amadou Bello University. Now, those 17 faculties can be what we call a future data set. It's a collection of related future classes that share a common coordinate system. Now, faculty or college of medicine has two faculties, right? Now, in these two faculties, there are departments that relate to one another. They are basic science, uh, medicine and applied medicine. So basic medicine have uh, things like uh, MBBS, nursing. So the future data set here is the basic science, uh, medicine and also uh, applied medicine and also uh, faculty of engineering and also faculty of arts, faculty of uh, physical, faculty of life science, faculty of environmental design, faculty of law. Those are future data set because they also uh, put into them again also uh, classes that are of common interest. Example, the department. If you enter environmental design today, you will have department of geomatics, department of uh, architecture, department of uh, urban and regional planning, glass and silicate technology, uh, building department, fine arts, and industrial design. So those can be classified as future class. So the pot of the pot you're going to use in cooking the rice is the container going to contain the rice and all the things you're going to cook to have your rice at the end of the day. Amadou Bello University is another example for a geodatabase containing the faculties and the departments inside. So the faculties are the future data set. Then the department are the future class. All right. So this are just lay explanation. So at the end of the day, both of these, the future class, are represented in both uh, point, line, or polygon. So depending on the project you're embarking on, if you're embarking on school, like I explained before, uh, schools within a location you go for, identify them as point, not that you carry your total station or you go and be picking the four corner of the school boundaries. That's not ideal, all right? So all line in terms of roads, rivers, or polygon in terms of water body, in terms of uh, 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 a administrative boundary of a local government, a state, or a country, or, and so on and so forth, all right? So each of them all also have attributes. Now, in future data set, that's where, if you're going to create a future data set, that's where you're going to create your, you're going to select um, what we call coordinate system. Because the future class will no longer carry the uh, uh, provision for a coordinate system. Once you create a future data set, you'll be able to just put everything because they are going to have the same coordinate system and all that. So, so basically, these are the relative concepts that you will commonly hear in ArcGIS desktop to be precise. This applied in either it is QGIS you're using or it is uh, ARC, GIS Pro, and the rest. So this brings us to the end of this class, and I will see you in the next class. 
So the next class will be an introduction to uh, the software we're going to be using and also the introduction to that very software. So stay tuned and don't forget to turn down any notes of anything you've decided and you've learned from this class. Put it in writing. It's better when you write things down. You memorize it more and you will also recall to it better than just looking at it on the video. Visual is good, but you need to also put it down. All right, so I will see you in the next video coming up shortly.